Welcome to Red, White, and Blue. From the right, I'm Gary Pollland. And from the left, I'm David Jones. We just had an election, and we're going to have some discussion here tonight about what happened on Tuesday. We have Harris County Democratic Party Chairman Jerry Bernberg and Jared Woodfield, who is the Harris County Republican Chair. And gentlemen, you get to talk about all things local first. You know, I know you want to jump, Jared, to, you know. <laughs> I want to talk about the nation. Yeah, New Jersey and Virginia, but, you know, we, we, we really could care less. We, we yeah, we know to, you could uh, care uh, less. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own views, but I, that's, they're not relevant to this discussion. We need to hear from the two leaders of two political parties here uh, who can tell us what happened in the Tuesday election, wherein we have a runoff now between Anise Parker mm -hmm. and Gene Locke for mayor, and we had a prominent Republican named uh, Morales, who did pretty well. We have a well-regarded Democrat named Peter Brown, who spent a lot of money and didn't do so well. Mm -hmm. So what's your take? Well, I mean, it was obviously a very exciting, uh, exciting election at the national level, but let's talk about the local <laughs> level first, which is the, which is we want to uh, focus on this first segment. Roy Morales' campaign was by far the biggest surprise of the night. I mean, this is a guy who spent less than $50,000 compared to millions being spent by well-known Democrats, came up with over 20% of the vote. Why did he do it? Why did we have that type of turnout? Why did he have that type of response? Because he was able to take his conservative message into communities that were not being catered to by the big-time Democrat names in this race. I think he is clearly tapped into the Tea Party movement. I think he's clearly tapped into what we saw in the town hall meetings across the country. I think he's clearly tapped into the sentiment of the nation, and you saw that with you know twenty plus percent. He nationalized, of the, vote. He nationalized he did, the election all by himself what he did. with fifty thousand dollars, Jerry. He did. Well, well, first of all, boy, I hope that Jared's <laughs> right about that. That that, uh, that is energizing the Republican base here. He got thirty five thousand votes total in a city of, of, of uh, over two or right at two million people. And if that's energizing, if getting twenty percent of the vote. Is uh, makes you uh, optimistic, then I'm feeling pretty well, comfortable as a Republican, uh, as Jerry, a Democrat. Jerry, let's put it all in perspective. Over 20 percent of the vote, a fifty thousand dollar budget. Okay. No one really knew who he was going to the election. Well, Your guys spend cumulatively over five million bucks. By the way, and, and and he's a player in the race. He almost beats Peter Brown, who spent three million dollars and who came in third. By the way, but Barely. let me say, let me make this comment because I think one of the things that we did see from this race is the diminishing influence of big money uh, in local mm -hmm. politics. Uh, Peter Brown spent a lot of money, came in <laughs> third, uh, and, and uh, Peter, just barely. Peter Brown's wife spent a lot of money. All right, Peter Brown spent <laughs> nearly three million dollars. And he got just a few more votes than than uh, uh, Roy Morales got, but a whole lot fewer votes, by the way, than either of the other two uh, Democratic candidates in the race. But the same thing uh, happened in various other races throughout the nation as well as local. Number one, money is diminished. Number two, and I'm getting ready to compliment you here, oh, so hold you, on just a I, second. I, I think what we also <laughs> I think what we also saw was the influence instead of. Uh, of grassroots organizing That's because right. here's what happened with regard to Mr. Morales. Two weeks before the election, the polls had him at no more than 10 percent. Then the Republican Party endorsed him, got behind him, put out several hundred thousand telephone calls for him, sent out flyers for him. Uh, Gary uh, sent out uh, his email addresses for him and, and uh, all of a sudden he went from 10 points to 20 points, not on the back of money but on the back of grassroots right. organizing. And, and that's an excellent point too because the party did engage, in, in TCR engaged we sent out 70,000 Texas Conservative Review, uh, the publication of our your fine co-host there. Uh, but you we did, <laughs> I, I, had, I had no idea. A promo for the for the magazine. Uh, but it's what free. we did, <laughs> what we did was we targeted Republican households. We did a mailer that hit 70,000 houses. I think Gary did just about the same thing. We did over 200,000 calls. But what what a lot of people don't realize is a few days before, actually the night before the election, Roy Morales was at a Tea Party event that had 10,000 people. In Harris County, ten thousand people who are angry about what they're seeing happen at the national level. And at, some, at, some race, at a racetrack. That's right. Outside, Morales, outside the city limits, right? Uh, actually, it, it's it's near the city limits. Most of the folks there were from from Harris County or living in the city of Houston. These I were grassroots that. conservative activists who are upset about what they where they see their nation going in the past ten months. And Roy Morales was able to tap into that sentiment, and that's why you saw a candidate running on less than fifty thousand dollars who was able to get over twenty percent of the vote. And right. yet, with all of that. All he was able to get was 20% well, of the vote yeah, in, well, a, in a community this large. And, and I told you what the good news was. You all did a good job on grassroots. The bad news is you've demonstrated by the third election in a row that the city of Houston is not attainable for Republicans 
with the message that you've got, with the energy that you claim. Uh, look, it, six or twelve years ago, the last uh, it, when you had uh, uh, Mossbarker against Lee Brown, uh, and Mr. Mossbarker got forty-eight percent of the vote. He made it into a mm -hmm. primary with a whole heck of a lot of votes. Run six off. years ago, yeah. uh, into the runoff. Right. Six years ago, you had uh, a, a runoff election when you had three strong candidates: two Democrats, Sylvester Turner, Bill mm -hmm. uh, White, and uh, uh, Orlando Sanchez is a Republican. The Republican was made, uh, able to make it into the runoff well, uh, with a lot more so votes. Yeah. So now what you come what, to what 2009 Berger, and you can't break 20%. What, Barry, well, what, Berger, what Jerry Bernberg is saying, Gary, is you just wasted your time. No, 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 no. no. But let me add something because he did hit a very good point. A very good point. His point was that this is a Democratic city. We know what the numbers city. are in the city. The county is Republican. The city uh, went for Al Gore. The city went for John Kerry. Uh, the city went for Barack Obama. But what was so interesting about this election was that the issues were what were key. We know that city races are nonpartisan, but they are not non-ideological. And if you look at every piece of mail that the Democrats were putting out, whether it be Gene Locke, Anise Parker, Peter Brown, they all talked about limited government. They all talked about lower taxes. None of them talked about big social programs that they were going to spend taxpayer dollars on. So issues do matter. And I think Gary understood that very well when he was chairman, and he started getting the party involved in nonpartisan relations, not based on party affiliation, but based on ideology, based on principles. Well, and I was going to say, Jerry, that what I think happened is that the the candidates, the major candidates running, believed that the race was going to be determined on the west side among, you know, generally more conservative voters. That's the the message that came from Parker and Locke and even from Brown was to try to attract those votes. <clears throat> I think what's really interesting is that who is most successful, I think, in the end will determine who the next mayor is. I think that each of the candidates in the finals have their constituencies are going to be supportive of them. Uh, and then what the west side does will determine that, Actually, which is interesting. For, right? for, that could be... I'll prognosticate that, that uh, for December 12th, which is a Saturday in December, less than two weeks before for Christmas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, try, exactly, uh, and trying to guess whether it's going to be the west side well, of Montrose or, or, or that, vote? exactly, and I'm going to suggest to you that it's going to be uh, whoever is able to mobilize and bring any kind of energy and any kind of sense of history to their campaign to a relatively small number of people, because that's all it's going to take. Well, how about this? And, and that's what's going to determine who the winner is going to be, and it's not going to be determined right. by the, whether how they appeal question? to the West Side. So the turnout or, in the election was about 20 percent? Uh, exactly, 178,000 right. people. Where was the rest of the people? Why didn't they vote? Because you had, uh, it was, uh, you had three Democratic candidates who were homogenous on, on philosophy, on ideals, and on principles. The difference on any substantive issue between a Gene Locke and a Peter Brown, for example, was virtually indecipherable. And so, therefore, the, the folks said, hey, it really doesn't matter to me which of those three is, is the mayor. I'm, I'm okay with any of them and all of them, and I'll just go about my business doing other things. Before we, go to, uh, before we get off of this, Jared, I want you to explain how it is that you cannot benefit, you as a Republican Party, in this runoff, if you choose to. You have two people running for mayor. One of them is African American. In general elections, mm -hmm. you lose that vote 90-10. Mm -hmm. We have a gay lady uh, running for mayor against him. You lose that vote 70-30. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just choose and make a difference in your party and, re and, and enlarge your coalition? Well, we are going to be talking to the candidates. In fact, we received a call from one of the major candidates just yesterday, the day after the election, and, and we want to talk to them about where they stand on issues. We want to talk to them about commitments on, on variety of programs, whether it be 287G, whether it be the pension fund, a whole host of issues that are important to our Republican base. We want to talk to them in detail about these things. But let me go to something that you hit Does on earlier. Does that mean you there. stipulate that you could actually make some gains as a party by reaching out and enlarging your coalition well, and including one of these well, two. Well, let me put it to you this way. We're not going to compromise on what we believe. We're not going to compromise on our party platform. We're not going to compromise on those issues that brought us to the majority. Instead, we're going to see if these candidates align with us on any of those issues. And then, ultimately, our base you, you, will make you, that you're, decision you're as try, to who they're going to support. You're going to try and, to find out whether Gene Locker and these Parker is a Republican? No, hey, I'm going to try. Save well, you some but, time. <laughs> well, I can answer that question <laughs> real quickly. But, you know, it's all about <laughs> issues in these city races. It's where do you stand on Immigration. Where do you stand on the economy? Where do you stand on a pension plan in a city that, for the most part, for all practical purposes, is broke? $1.5 billion in operating losses over the past five years. And where were those numbers that Jerry was talking about? I'll tell you where those numbers were. Those 405,000 or so Democrats that came out in the Democratic primary, a lot of those folks stayed home because they don't like what they're seeing in Washington. Obama hasn't delivered. The economy's in the tank at 9.8, soon to be 9.9% .9 unemployment. And they said, enough is enough. Listen, what we 
have bargained for. Well, then why didn't they come out and vote for Roy Morales, by the way? I think that's a completely upside down. They did. Down. They a, did. 20, 000, uh, 35,000 20, people in the a, entire city? Which no, was I think on that a $50,000 budget, Jerry. I think Jerry. what happened was they weren't angry at what the state of, the, of, of things of play is within the city of Houston. And uh, a lot of folks didn't come out because they didn't see any well, need to, Jerry, not because it, it, they were so <laughs> angry they were disheartened. I have to disagree with you there, my okay. friend. They may not, if they weren't angry, I'll tell you the rest of the country was angry because we saw Virginia, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, what a neat segue. and the whole rest of the country <laughs> yeah, rejecting yeah. Obama's <laughs> referendum. Except that how can anybody not address, Gary, you as well, how can you not address the possibilities for Gene Locke when you have, also in the runoff, two other major citywide candidates who are African American, Jolanda Jones, and Ron Green running for controller. John Jones actually is in trouble. Uh, Big fact, trouble. She, she's probably not going to win if the turnout model works. And Green, uh, look, I mean, if you, looked at the, if you look at the momentum in that campaign, MJ Khan's got the momentum. His day vote numbers were significantly better than the other two candidates, and he mm -hmm. has come on. And, of course, you Green's still got there, right? this uh, tax uh, issue. Really, but well, but African-Americans have won't a go reason away. to turn out because they have that oh, large... Oh, oh, that's correct. Oh, okay, that point I understand. And if African-American community turns out in a low turnout uh, environment, then why isn't that going to be good news for, guys, for, for Ron Green and Jolanda but, Jones exactly. as well but as... David, there's, for, a, for, uh, there's a faulty uh, assumption behind, behind your, your premise. Your premise is, your assumption is that African Americans only go out to vote for African Americans. They oh. vote on issues. Oh, period. really? I, I am 100% committed Gosh. to that. I don't believe people just vote race. <laughs> he and, and doesn't listen. believe you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they vote hmm. on, people vote on issues. And I think that's true of the African American community, the Hispanic community, and the Asian community, all communities, that they look at the candidate individually and they make thoughtful decisions based on where that candidate I, stands hmm. on the issues. Now, assuming hmm. that's that to be correct, I cannot believe <laughs> that, the agree. that the African American community uh, believes that Mr. Christie is better uh, for their community on issues than Jolanda Jones, well, who, if anything, has I think, been I think quite the African -American outspoken activist well, in the African American community. I think the African American right. community is very supportive Tuesday. of the fire department, and Jolanda Jones has National. not been supportive uh -huh. of the fire department. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, I was going to say that in Jolanda Jones's case, she's made lots of major league enemies. She she was the best funded candidate in the race, Christie being the number two. The other candidates also got votes, even though they didn't spend hardly any money. That is but, a stunning, uh, stunning uh, uh, number will, for her. I will say this, however, uh, again, especially Gary, since I we had live. Candidates I, at large who won running uh, mm -hmm, first time mm -hmm. with uh, multiple funded candidates. I think candidates. it betrays a serious uh, a misunderstanding of the nature of a mid December runoff election for us to be sitting here saying who's going to win in those kinds of races because we don't know who's going to turn out. Uh, well, well, let's just do the math, though, guys. Carlos mm -hmm. Obanda, who was also a Republican in that race, received about 13% of the vote. You put Jack Christie and Carlos Obanda's vote together, we win. Yeah. And you think and you can't put it. them together. That's the point. I mean, Jerry, that's, that's, what, that's what we're going to have to say. What Whoever issue the are these Republican voters going to turn out in, for in December? In December the oh, I think they're going to turn with, out on which immigration. Which candidate has got it? 287G, I think that's going to be a big issue. And I think there's a clear, stark difference between Jolanda Jones and Jack Christie on that issue. What have you explained 287G for us? Do you want me to do it? You do it. You okay. do it. It's, uh, essentially, it's, 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 yeah, it's a police, uh, it's, how they're going to interplay with the federal government. Which the Democratic sheriff, which the Democratic sheriff supports, essentially allows the police department, the sheriff's of, department, uh, to work together with illegals. the federal government to screen illegal immigrants who come through the jail using the software or the programming system uh, provided by the federal government, and our jailers would be trained by the federal government. Hmm. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound like a very controversial issue that's going to just get everybody up. Mayor White, seems, just can't. Ma Mayor White seems not to like it. It's a controversial <laughs> issue, but I do not believe in... I think that the things that are motivating people these days are things like jobs, there are things like... Property economy, Absolutely. Absolutely. Things, Absolutely. Property, taxes. property yeah. taxes. I don't dispute that, but I think those are going to be a whole lot more about what voters that's might true. have in mind uh, than, than well, uh, immigration policy. Well, there's a profound difference between obviously. Jack Christie and Jolanda Jones on limitation of property taxes. By the, the way, uh, yes. just like there is between Gene Locke but, and uh, and Anise Parker, Parker who control. she favors yeah. a cap, and he doesn't. Uh, speaking of speaking of tax taxes and tax assessor collectors, yes. we just settled. We just saw a lawsuit settled uh, where the Texas started. Democratic Party Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. sued and and. Well, and this is something that this is something that I firmly disagree with Jerry on, as as most well, of your, I didn't. Fin you'll have to explain. Finish, he's, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I, I can. I can Please I, do. I'd be happy to explain. The the, the, the Democratic Party uh, State Party Jerry 
filed suit against uh, Harris County, the tax assessor collector, Paul Betancourt being first, and then Leo Vasquez claiming that there was apparently a systematic effort, according to the Democrats, of, of disqualifying people from registering to vote. Oh, I don't that's what think, the claim no, was. No, that's, a, claim that's, was a, that's, a, that's an incorrect uh, characterization. Well, that's my that's executive claim. summary. All right. <laughs> I think it's correct. It's correct summary. And, the original uh, lawsuit. There was claims made, bandied about by you, Jerry, about and, the Chronicle, nope. and the Chronicle, and the Chronicle that 70,000 people were rejected for registration. Correct. And, uh, Jared, what did the well, Chronicle come back and say uh, later? Uh, Jerry's very familiar with it. This is Chronicle based on Jerry's comments that Paul Betton court had wrongfully rejected over 70,000 applicants. They took and relied upon your statement. They ran with it. They right, looked at the facts later and said, we got it wrong. We got it wrong because we relied upon Mr. Bernberg. And Jerry, I really do think you need to look into that camera and apologize to Paul Betancourt and to Leo Vasquez for no. essentially putting bad information about them, attacking oh, their credibility not... and their character and saying, I got it wrong, Paul. I got it I, wrong, Leo, and I'm I, sorry I made a mistake. I absolutely did not. I'm going to tell you why. You Look, got it wrong. Uh, David, if you, if you apply for a loan at the bank and the bank sends you a letter and says, sorry, we're not going to give you the money, <laughs> but you're free to reapply within the next 10 days. Have you been rejected? Yes. Well, that's what happened to 65,000 people who sent applications Absolutely to Paul. Not true. It, wait a minute. Not it true. is not by, it is by Betancourt's own admission. What happened was when people submitted their applications, if there was a box that was not checked, the 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 uh, uh, office sent back a letter to people saying we can't register you now, but you're free to reapply within 10 days. Didn't tell them what was wrong with it. They just said. Well, they just said, we cannot issue you a voter registration certificate. You're welcome to reapply, period, in the story. Okay, well, now, no, 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 Paul admits that. Uh, Paul admits that. He admits. says that is a, quote, but notice of different. incomplete, but here's the, not here's a rejection. Let's take your scenario. Let's well, take your little hypothetical. Well, well, notice well, of incomplete hypothet and rejection. Your hypothetical would essentially oh, wow. be saying... The bank rejects your application. You then say to the bank, you committed fraud, bank. You lied. You I cheated. Didn't... You were trying to somehow discriminate against this person. What Jerry fails to tell you is that Paul Betancourt followed the law, the law of the state of Texas, and the law is given to yep. him by the Secretary of State. He actually only rejected, legally rejected, 3,500 people. Now, let's put that in perspective. Tarrant County rejected 10,000 folks, and here's the problem with your assertion. You have used the 70,000 number to impugn the credibility of Paul Betancourt and Leo Vasquez as if they they were doing something unethical and illegal, and that's what I want you to apologize for, because these are good men. Okay, here's okay, integrity. Then, wait a minute, you know wait that. A minute. You Paul, know that. On Paul Betancourt's own acknowledgement, those letters, what do you call it, letters of incomplete, did not go out within the seven days that the law required. Jerry. He claims he was just overwhelmed with too many voter registrations, and he didn't get around to it. And so what happens ultimately is that people got Jerry? the letter. How many were ultimately rejected? Well, how by, many? By, by my definition, 60,000 Okay, well, that's settles that. That settles that initially. We're, we're not worried about Paul. So I guess you're not going to apologize to him. We're not I'm worried not about Paul Betancourt no. anymore. He can take care. He's a big man. I will man. say this. I said this no, 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 no. Paul no, Betancourt's a nice guy. Jerry, you have to answer this lawsuit. Excuse me. You have to answer this, Jerry. Somebody settled this lawsuit. To whose advantage was this settlement? Uh, that's Taxpayers? an easy one. That, it, it was settled to the, the, the advantage of people who want to vote in Harris County. Oh my all God. we did, all we did with that lawsuit was to try to, to make sure that the law will be followed. Okay. Without, by the way, saying both sides say we're not look, talking look, about look, what look, went look. on in the past, but we're talking about what's going to go on in the future. This, in the future, okay. in the future, I let me tell you, a, that. All right, in the future, there will not be changes in the deputy voter registrar program, such as the current voter registrar proposed okay. in, early this I year. Gotta, I got to add that. Right, that was, well, no, no, we, this is way too much, Jared. Way too much on this little motivated lawsuit. Fine, you've, that and you've made that point. To hurt now, the character of two guess what? Guess what? I'd like for you to now tell us the meaning of Tuesday nationally. I know. Well, I'll tell your you. Your turn that. to talk about Virginia. I'll tell you this much. Uh, <laughs> Tuesday showed me the Republican Party is out of the political wilderness. It was really the country saying we've had buyer's remorse with respect to the last presidential election. I mean, you just go look at state after state after state. Virginia. State, state that, after state after finish. state. state there were only state. two states, and well, you gave me three there. I'll give you three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's You're the going third one? He missed one. Pennsylvania. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second. Virginia. Oh. Uh, uh, it was a state that Barack Obama won handily. Clean sweep. 20 points. Governor. Lieutenant Governor. Attorney General. Let's Go over to, let's go over to New Jersey, a state Barack Obama won by 15 points. We now have a Republican governor named Chris Christie against a very well-funded Democrat in John Corzine. And one nobody ever wants to talk about is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, a state Barack Obama won by 10 points. 
People don't want to talk about the Supreme Court race where the Republican and Republican challenger was outspent three to one and won by six points. I'm not surprised. Six uh, Pennsylvania points. is no, not being talked about. But uh, I wouldn't want to talk sil- about silver linings. Either. Silver linings for you, Mr. Bernberg. Uh, silver linings. <laughs> there are sil- any. No, 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 seriously. Okay, the, sil- the, the silver linings uh, uh, are that. Each of those states has voted for the party that is uh, for governor for the party which is not in the presidency for the last 36 years. It would have been earth shattering for there to be any outcome other than the outcome that there was. Uh, uh, I think what you're trying to to give me a softball to hit is the the (laughs) 23rd congressional district in New York, where for the first time since the Civil War, a Democrat is being sent to Congress. There's an explanation for that. Absolutely, there's an explanation for that. Remember, I said the pooch on that. Here's what. Here's my uh, silver lining. You can't look for a silver lining in a uh, 2009 uh, uh, election cycle for well, local offices well, any more than you can say, okay, look what happened you in the see a congressional... Message, the, the, what's the message? I think the message is very clear that, that the Blue Dog Democrats who are about to vote on Obamacare better watch how they vote. The, I, these, no. are, these are Democrats what? in Republican-leaning districts, well, Jerry, and they're going to be sent home in, in just Jerry, a few months. Here's, here's what happened. I mean, yep. it, for, in fact, Go ahead. okay, Obama <laughs> campaigned in both states heavily. He put yes. his prestige on the line, just like he did when he went and traversed mm-hmm. overseas to try to get the Olympics. Yeah. And maybe he shouldn't have. But given that he did that, they are they end up being defeats for Obama. And Jared's right that blue dog Democrats, I, in fact, any Democrat is looking at this cockamamie health plan bill needs to take a step back because I think this actually portends political disaster for the Democrats, primarily because the bill but, is a bad bill. And where didn't Barack well, campaign, guys? He didn't yeah. campaign in New York 23. No, he didn't. What is that now, let, let's, uh, you know, because we're, <laughs> a, lo- because we're a local show... We <laughs> or, are, by the way, <laughs> in Maine, which may be a more significant political Look issue. Look at what happened in Maine. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's what, what, here's what didn't happen in Virginia, uh, Jared, yeah. or in New Jersey. They didn't talk about gay marriage in either of those states. Neither of the Republicans but did. But they did in Maine. Well, well, in they Maine, did. they did big time. That so was issue. because we're a local party and we have filing uh, for <laughs> local office coming up in uh, early December. It starts in December, ends uh, January. January 3rd? 3rd? Yeah, it's 4th. 4th this year. Fourth. That's right. It, it's, it's, it's Monday because New Year's news, Day is uh, The big Friday. news of the filing for uh, is coming up for you, Jared, is that a Republican county commissioner named Jerry Eversole, sure. who has admitted that he probably should be indicted on several occasions and was fined by the Texas, Texas well, Ethics Commission. He was hoping no, he wouldn't be indicted. Well, he, he predicted. <laughs> right, yeah, he right. predicted. That's now, true. He is going to be your party's standard bearer in a, in a, in a commissioner's district. And, I'm, and I've seen you try to run people out of the Republican Party for good reason. When they have flawed ethically, well, what are you right. going to do with Jerry well, Eversole? Well, with respect to Jerry Eversole, obviously, one, he was not indicted. And, and what motivated him Has to make what? Been, yeah, you know, and he will not. I don't believe he will be indicted. So uh, it is. it would be wrong for anyone to accuse him something that the government has chosen not to accuse him of. Uh, so I don't even want to go down that road. And why he made those comments, I don't know. Only Jerry can answer that so question. So he's, what is he? Secondly, by the way, if, you're talking Jerry Eversole, not Jerry. Jerry, yeah, that's yeah. right. Secondly, if we're going to talk about uh, people being fined by the Ethics Commission and that disqualifying uh, us from supporting them, there will be a whole lot of people who have made innocent mistakes on campaign filing reports that we're not going to be able to support. Yeah, Jerry, the, first yeah. off, by the way, that's the biggest fine that has ever been levied and paid in the history of the Texas Ethics Commission, $75,000. Well, a whole lot more than five hundred dollars those, but we all both know here, those accounts, know. those reports are done by other people. The, the candidate never does their own. They usually have a CPA or somebody else who's responsible for that. Wait a minute. It what are you looking for? Jerry, what are you looking forward to in terms of the Democratic filings and your predictions for the fall? Next well, year. first of all, the judicial races. I'm going to expect a, an avalanche of uh, folks filing for judicial races. Uh, we're going to have a full slate of competent folks in the in the administrative offices. Uh, to get that record straight, by the way, the filing uh, deadline begins on Saturday, the 5th of December. That's the first time That's that right. you can file. However, and I think here we're going to agree on something, uh, uh, come together. Filing for precinct chair, which may be the most important mm-hmm. office, mm-hmm. Uh, because that's where the rubber meets the road right. in that's terms right. of local pol- party politics. Agreed. It's already underway. That's right. uh, if you want to become an activist in this community, become a precinct chair in your precinct that's right. and I go agree. file right now. Yeah, we want you, and I'm sure that uh, he so wants you. If you're how on much that side. You, how much do you get paid? I may volunteer. I may, oh, you get, the uh, pay I may the, you get paid the same price that we get paid. I I the same salary we make. So Jerry, uh, so uh, <laughs> you're going to have a full judicial slate. You, yes. you got a candidate running against Eversol? 
Uh, well, that's a very that that's, an, that's a, a really interesting point. There will be a candidate running against Eversol. I'm pretty confident we were not really recruiting anybody to run against uh, Commissioner Eversol because that is, let's be candid about that, is a heavily Republican mm -hmm. uh, district. Right. Uh, what did it do, 60-40 for, yeah, for McCain, for right. example? Um, so it would be a very challenging district for a, a Democrat. Now, despite what, you, what Jared says, I think that it's unquestionable mm -hmm. that, that uh, Commissioner Eversol is ethically tainted right now. He, he is potentially vulnerable in a district which, by the way, voted for Adrian Garcia, despite voting simultaneously. So the Democrats well, going to make him the Chuck Rosenthal? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a strong possibility that that could happen. I will answer well, directly and straightforward. Since he made that announcement, I've had three people call me wanting to know the information about the district, wow. evidencing some serious interest well, in the district. Well, and if they're going to use campaign and, filing mistakes as a basis for attacking mistakes. someone, they are going to have it's, a whole lot of problems. It's not every a, single one of their, a lot of their candidates, not everyone have a similar They were problems. not filing mistakes. They were misuse of, of, of political of funds. funds. That's not true. That's I think it was $75,000 to Starbucks is what I recall. Well, <laughs> it was a, no, 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 no. It, it was a big, it was a big no, number for absolutely. Starbucks. It will be a hotly contested race, but we're going to win. All right. Well, guys, it's been fun, and we're glad you were here. We hope Thanks that you can us. do it again. Uh, awesome. There will be a, a runoff December 12th. Hope you'll, hopefully you'll be there. And we hope people vote, David, because it's important. <laughs> and an early vote yeah. before. And early That's vote. right. And you can view tonight's show again, if you'd like, on <laughs> Sunday, following tonight's discussion, or find out more about Red, White, and Blue by visiting us at HoustonPBS.org. So check that out. And until next time, get informed and get active.